Hi, I'm WDHA's Terry Carr, and you are inside DHA's Box of Rock. It's our new weekly online feature focusing on everything relevant in rock and roll. I love me a good super group, and we've got a brand new one on the scene. They are Black Country Communion, featuring legendary deep purple vocalist Glenn Hughes, Derek Sherinian, who you might know from the band Dream Theater, the one and only Jason Bonham on drums, and Joe Bonamassa on guitar. Smoking group talking about their debut, and we caught up in New York City with Glenn Hughes and Joe Bonamassa. They told us a little bit about Black Country Communion. Let's check it out. So the Box of Rock is on location. Yeah, we're hanging out with uh, Black Country Communion. What a cool band. I've got Glenn Hughes to my left and uh, the one and only Joe Bonamassa to my right. Thank you guys for being inside the Box of Rock with me today. It's our pleasure to be inside that Box of Rock. Let me tell you a little bit about Black Country Communion. It's Derek Sherinian, it's Jason Bonham, and it's these two monster talents. I don't know, do you guys want to be called a super group or is, the, or is that sort of like a cliche? I think it's what we will be called because it says on the tin, ex-member, Purple, Zeppelin, you've got uh, the new number one guitar player on the planet right now, Don't Do Embarrass Joe, and we have the versatility of Derek Sherinian. So, so you know, it's, it's probably what we will be labeled because of that. So um, we are the latest new band uh, on the block at the moment, and we're just really super excited about what we're about to, uh, to release here. And I think hard rock fans, Glenn especially, are so happy to see you back in the fold. I mean, the, the project is so interesting to me. I know, Joe, you and Glenn have had sort of a backstory together, but tell us a little bit how Black Country Communion came to be a band. Well, um, the whole impetus for it uh, started at the House of Blues last November when my friend Glenn was nice enough to come down and sing a couple of songs um, with, with my band. And uh, it just basically, you could just, you know, the energy on stage was so like infectious and the crowd just went ballistic. And my producer, who had done, who's done all my solo albums the last, you know, well, six years, uh, Kevin Shirley was there. And um, he said, you know, like, we should do a band. We should, we should ring up Jason Bonham and we should ring up Derek Sherinian and we should make a band out of this. And like, you know, Glenn and I were sitting there in the foundation room innocently going, this all sounds fantastic. So within five weeks of that conversation, we literally were in Shangri-La Studios in January with songs and gear and people and we hit the red light, you know, hit the record button and, you know, nine months later the, the record comes out. So one of those things in folklore, rock and roll, where four or five guys with Kevin, we get together and it just synchronizes right. Mm -hmm. The songs, a little luck, a little love, a few cups of coffee, a lot of work, a lot of sweat, a lot of toil, a lot of laughter, and just a, a vibe that was made for this band. Well, and, and don't forget too, uber talents. I mean, you've got the best of the best, top of game guys in this project. I mean, it's absolutely tremendous. Um, here's the record. Uh, bringing sort of hard rock back to the fold, Glenn, I mean, your voice is the voice of hard rock. Do you think that the audience, music audiences, have been hungry for, for that hard rock and sound to sort of come back? Then this band, what we have here, I think, and it's really hard for me to discuss to you, but I think, I think what people are saying is that we have songs that generate to many de generations of rock fans, you know. If you are a Zep fan or a Who fan or a Free or a Humble Pie, a Purple fan, ACDC fan, then probably this is the album for you. Uh, we made a record that is very English sounding, mm -hmm. although we have two Americans in the band. I like that. Yes, yeah. and, and we wanted to make a very focused rock and roll classic album, yeah, the, which, you know, really hasn't been done for a while, so we are making a record that is appropriate for us as, as rockers, you know. Also, let me ask you, did you know Jason Bonham as a young boy? I, I mean, knowing him yeah. all, his, all of his life, wow. Wow. before he remembered me as his Uncle sure. Glenn. Sure. I knew his father very well, very good friends with the Bonham family, and I knew the, 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 the farmer John, I knew like right. the guy that used to dig holes in the ground and build right. houses. And right, the song remains the same, I know that, John, that's that the John. guy we saw for a while. Yeah, you know, so that's the Bonham I know, and you know, I've known Jason since he was in diapers, so 
I played with his father in 71, and now I'm playing with his son, 39 Amazing. years. It's just Amazing. a beautiful story. Absolutely. You know? Now, Joe, let me ask you, let's, let's talk a little bit about technology and new technology. This is a phenomenal record. Talk to me about making a great record as opposed to just putting out a song or a single. We're sort of in this downloading world right now. Um, how important was it for you guys to put out just a, a fantastic record, and, and how important do you think it is for an audience to get a record from a band? Well, uh, you have to look at it this way. You know, you have to ask yourself the questions, like, why are CD sales down. Well, there's only so many times people will go into a shop and pay 18 US dollars or, you know, 12 pounds for a record and get two or three good songs and the rest of them are filler. There's only so many times people are going to do that before they just go, I'd rather just get the good song offline. Hence, hence record sales go down. But with this group, this is an old school mentality. We took just as much pride in our lead off track as we did with our final track. And that that really has some, you know, it says a lot about the the the, the people in this band and 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 you know the pride and the ability of everybody and and it, and it, to me it's like we recorded it all live. It was very quickly you know recorded. We did the whole record in four days. You know the the, the tracks and you know we did one or two takes, three takes of each song. Got the right vibe. Got the right you know um, approach and soloed live. Glenn sang some of it live and it was just like it was done as it should be done for this kind of music. So. There was a lot of effort put into this album. Joe and I got together a maximum of four times at my house and we really, really rammed it home. We, we, we worked around the clock only for a short period of time, but for the short period of time we worked together, it was cramming, 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 and we and I just didn't sl I just didn't want to sleep until like we got it right, you know. That's exciting. It's got to be so exciting. Yeah, and you know I could be Joe's dad. I mean I'm you know there's an age difference here, but I I feel invigorated and rejuvenated with the fact that I you know playing with this young fellow and 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 I'm in great shape spiritually, and mentally, and physically. So you know I'm I was born to be in this band and so was Joe you know it's a crazy fate when you know you got Joe and I coming together you uh, know Joe's career starting out I've done all the things and the, the, the t-shirts and stuff and now Joe and I have formed this great band and we're very very protective of one another Talk to me then about getting the band together and getting out on the road. I know everybody's got things going on. Glenn, you've always had projects going on. And Joe, you've got tours and Jason's doing the Zeppelin experience. When will you guys be taking the show on the road? Because there's no way. You can't tour behind this. You've got to get out and do some live shows. We will. It it'll happen. Uh, when We will end the, the two days when it's appropriate. But we are working behind the scenes now. and. We don't want to fool anyone uh, by giving any dates until they're announced, but I can promise you this, we will be touring and it'll be splendid. I don't doubt it for one minute. Uh, Black Country Communion, the CD is out. You've got to check it out. And thank you guys so much, Joe Bonamassa and, of course, the legendary Glenn Hughes for joining me inside WDHA's Box of Rock. Oh, just, You're a doll. Mm, we go way back. Mwah. Yeah, Joe was on Blues and Brews, actually, played a couple of shows for WDHA back in the day. I was like four, and he was like seven, and do you remember when we were kids? <laughs> and Glenn wasn't even born yet. It's always great talking to rock legends, and Glenn Hughes is one of my all-time favorite classic rock singers, and Joe Bonamassa, absolutely smoking. Again, we should get some dates in 2011, and their debut, Black Country Communion, is available now. It is so great. Hey, coming up next week, we go down under, talking to the Aussie saucy band that everybody seems to love these days, the one and only Airborne for our five questions in under five minutes segment. Don't miss it. For WDHA's Box of Rock, I am Terry Carr. I'll see you tomorrow at 10.